So hey guys, Mike here. Um, so I want to tie or try, give an attempt to uh, a, a, a salmon fly called the pillowcase. Um, so for this uh, for this fly, I'm going to be using uh, burnt orange, burnt orange, UTC uh, thread in 70. And uh, let me go ahead and give it a zoom in real quick. Uh, this is also a uh, a size 12, no, size 10 curved hook, and um, go ahead and start the start the thread all the way to the back, all the way back, to about right chair, right. Well, maybe one more. Let me go ahead and bring it back and uh, cut off my waist end, and then kind of go work my way down to about three turns before the barbed hook. And uh, I'm gonna be using elk hair and gray. There you go. And uh, I actually saw this flyer here on the website. I haven't seen my tie it yet, but uh, which may be because, you know, this is not a traditional pattern. This is uh, something that you would, you know, see and an old fly tying book, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and clip off a good bunch of this uh, gray elk hair. Thin out all your thin fibers, all your short stuff. And uh, use about as much elk hair as you would for like about a size 14 elk hair caddis one. And go ahead and stack this stuff up. Makes everything shake when you do that. Like what? Okay. There we go. Perfect. And got a little too much. Yeah. Like I said, use about as much as you would use for like a size. Oh well. Keep in mind. Probably about a size 16 L care caddis wing. And then uh, you want, you want your tail to be pretty long. About uh, two times the gape of the hook, I'd say. And for the sake of beauty, okay, there we go. There you go. Give it one, one loose turn. And then uh, my thread's not quite tight enough to really spray this, splay this stuff out as much as I'd like. Okay, there we go. See how it really splays out now? Okay, I'm gonna stop right there for a second. Look at that nice tail. It's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so now I grab you some copper wire and uh, go ahead and give yourself a generous waist amount. Just helps later on. And then uh, go ahead and get a for this fly right here. Well, I've done this two ways actually. So this is a uh, this is a whiting. Back the camera up, son. Okay, so this is a high and dry hackle from whiting, and this is a uh, one of their traditional whiting patterns. This is in brown. Uh, I've used this stuff right here before. But uh, and also another really cool look that gives this fly is this, uh, uh, it's a Herbert Miner rooster style, uh, pro grade. And this stuff right here gives it a great look. As a matter of fact, um, let me see. Mm. No, I'm gonna, do the, I'm gonna do the brown. Just for, to be traditional. So go ahead and, for this fly right here, even though it's, I'm, I'm tying this flyer here in a size 10, you're going to get about a, uh, let's say about a 16 size hackle. Yes, yeah, so perfect. And uh, go ahead and, you know, 
pull back a few fibers right at the tip as best you can and it's too fragile you know okay that should work right there that's a little long perfect I'm actually glad that first one wasn't working with me. So yeah, go ahead and pull some of those fibers back right at the tip, which can even be done on the thin stuff. Go ahead and tie that tip in right there. And then start working your way forward. Applying good tension, working that hair forward. Make sure you're, you're touching turns. If you miss one, kind of tuck it back in or break it off. Okay. Now this right here, it's kind of a spin on a stimulator. It's a, uh, the, the, the sofa pillow, as it's called, is a, uh, or orange pillow, is a, uh, salmon fly but I'm wanting to kind of add it into my uh, my my trout box this year try to use it as a uh, as a tractor pattern but most of all I'd like to use this right here as a uh, strike indicator it's just got so much fluff on it that um make it would make a, a really good strike indicator and then once you get about you can come and see where I am and just keep stroking those fibers back and if you want to too uh, I'm not a big fan of it but you can kind of make big wraps to get about the point where you want to tie off and then go back and then tidy things up oops My vice on this let go. Okay. I'm gonna pull all this stuff right here back and everything and just clip it off. And then I'm gonna put my my uh everything into the uh into the material holder. Zoom back in and I'm gonna take I'm gonna use the Norvice to kind of build the body. Uh I could use this uh, Danville's floss in orange, but you know what? I actually found out this is you know just a much easier way to make a body. I mean, look at that. That's just it doesn't get much better stimulator body than that right there. So then I'm gonna come on within here with my hackle even though my hackle looks a little bit rough right now hold on caught all my tail fibers okay coming with my hackle this rough looking hackle because uh well got kind of caught up right there okay that's better That is some good looking Palmer tackle right there until I let go of it on accident. Short little feather. Okay. I'm gonna come in here. I'm just gonna make a couple turns real quick right at the back. Oh, there we go. Made about turn too many. Just finish everything off. Well, before I pull it back, let me go ahead and wrap my wire. I might counter wrap my wire.
bring all that hackle back just as if you were finishing the fly off okay break that off without bending your hook there we go Now to your wing. Even my Renzetti, the Renzetti Magnum has a hard time handling that much hair. Okay, here we go. And make sure when you're stacking this hair, you don't you don't you don't want to wrap it up around itself a lot. Uh, try to keep the hair in the same kind of position as you cut it, even you know before and after you stack it because you want that nice curve of the wing. You see how this kind of, kind of rolls back a little bit? You know, that's what you're looking for. And this is going to seem like a lot of hair on a fly, but that should work right there. Go ahead and I'm just going to pull out all these loose ends. It's kind of, it's really hard when you're trying to thin this hair out of all the bad fibers. It's really hard to keep it all even. And I'm just going to pull out some few more short fibers that I see and a couple that rolled yeah right there just before the end of the tail really bind that stuff down and once you got it bound really good Come in here with your hair scissors. Snip that off real quick. And then bind it down some more and then work your way forward. And then you see how I didn't go all the way back on the wing? I mean, I didn't go all the way back with my thread wraps on the wing. Get one butt in there. And I did that for a reason. What you want to do is so get your wing folded back really nice okay go ahead and grab the whole you know big bunch of the wing hold it down flat against the body push forward until it kind of used to kind of bubble bubble right there at your fingertips and then kind of make a couple really loose wraps right there that's gonna make your wing look a little bit better if you ask me. I like it that way. So once you get your, your wing bound down, go ahead and form the head. And I like, like I just did a little while ago, uh, for the sake of time, I went ahead and jumped the, the, the video ahead a little bit. Uh, go ahead and just use your thread wraps and use your thread color to make your head, your, your head just like you did the, uh, the body. And then uh, once you have your wing tied in, Go ahead and lay it down and just give it a push it forward just a little bit. You can see I'm kind of pushing it forward, and that's going to cause your wing to lay back just perfect, just like that. That's exactly what you're looking for good wide wing. <clears throat> so, now what you want to do is, is now you actually want to gra grab a, uh, a brown hackle out of this, uh, you know, brown whiting cape and uh, this is high and dry but go ahead and grab an actual size 10 or greater uh, hackle and don't worry about about forming the body on that head too much because the, the head on this fly right here is supposed to be very hot you know heavily hackled So let me find the right feather. I'm not used to going this. I'm not used to going to on this uh, cape right here. Uh, picking out feathers that are that heavy. If you don't think that your cape is gonna have fibers on it that go up to a size 10, uh, or if you're using a saddle. Uh, saddles usually have a very um, 
uh, saddles usually only cover a few hackle sizes, maybe size uh, 12 to 14 or something like that. Uh, just make sure you use a hackle on the um, on the on the head of this fly or the collar. Make sure you use a hackle that's at least two sizes bigger than the one used for the body. And that's about it right there. I'm gonna he I heavily hackle the fly the, the head of the fly, uh, almost like you would a sage or sedge not sage a sedge or something like that. There you go. Cool. And no rib needed. I'm going to put enough head cement on this fly to really make everything settle down. There we go. I'm only going to use a few wraps of thread. Sometimes I'll wind a couple in like I just did. Just kind of push those, those uh, hackle fibers back. And then I will... Then I'll, uh, you know, wind backwards and undo those wraps, and then I'll make my whip finish. So, one, two, three, four, five. And if you call any fibers like I just did there, just get your, your finest point scissors, come in here and just snip those away. Okay. Cut your thread. Post it up and then uh, go ahead and snip off that last piece of a uh, hackle. Tag end, waist end. But yeah, so that is the pillow cushion. And I told you, it's basically just a stimulator in orange. The floss body with a really heavy wing and a larger size than you usually uh, make a stimulator. Uh, hold on, yeah, I got a stimulator right here I can show you. It's in the mouth of a fish I caught. You know, that's that's your normal stimulator. If you can see, it's a little bit smaller. The wing's not quite as heavy. Yeah, and then next to the pillow cushion. Which, like I said, all it is is a uh, salmon size version of a stimulator. Pass around the backwood tobacco. When the sun goes down on the little town, they roll the sidewalks up. Make it hard to find a good time, oh, but that never does stop us. Cause when it comes to cutting loose, we know how to hold on. Buy our beer and gas at the Texaco, but the smoke is all homegrown. We put our trucks in the mud.